All right, what's up, guys? I think you guys got me I'm trying this from the uh, the Mac. I usually don't do it on the Mac, and this is the first time. I'm gonna also be going over here live on TikTok. So let's see what happens, guys. All right, what's up, guys? First time going live on TikTok. I always do my Facebook lives, and the kids and Devin are down um, at my parents' house at the shore. So utilizing this time, I told people that I was going to uh, be putting this podcast out this week. So that's why I do it, guys. I usually record the podcast, go live with them. So TikTok, I'll start doing that for you guys, too. And I'll try to get the questions. Um, you know, if I see anything pop up, I'll get through my stuff. And it turns into a podcast on iTunes. So five biggest factors in fat loss. These are my conclusions after um, 25 years of doing this, guys. 25 years, okay, of really uh, studying this in depth and applying it to my own body and teaching literally at this point thousands and thousands of people across the world that have uh, learned from me, right? Some people are... Um, intrigued by my different philosophies on fitness and, and, and life and whatnot. But let's go over these five biggest factors, okay? First one is focus. Now, if I had um, realized the degree that the mind plays in fat loss, when I first started bodybuilding back in 2004, okay? When I first started bodybuilding in 2004, to me, it was a physical struggle, right? And I learned a lot competing in bodybuilding, tracking all my food and my calories all the way down to a T. And really going through that struggle. And I would actually say suffering. There was points when I dieted so hard in in getting ready for some bodybuilding shows that I literally, literally would cry because I was just in so much physical discomfort, right? And I would have to starve myself. I'd have to go down to 13, 1400 calories for months to get ripped because I did it the wrong way the first few times and I messed up my meta, uh, metabolic rate, my metabolism. So, went through that, but the focus, what you focus on expands, what you focus on is what you feel. So when you are going for fat loss, first of all, it has to be an all out war, okay? It has to be an all out war when you're going for fat loss. When you get hungry, and this is something I teach with the panda, it can't be all oh, poor me, I'm hungry, let me go give in to the hunger. Um, you know, I feel momentary hunger. I reframe hunger, right? It, it, it's a complete thing of what you focus on. It's a feeling. You basically tell it to shut up and get out of here. And anytime I feel hunger, I reframe it in my mind as this is what fat loss feels like. Okay, this is what fat loss feels like. It's a matter of what you're focusing on. Now, another way that you could take this even deeper is when I was competing, I'd be following the same routine, calorie cutting, working out twice a day, blah, blah, blah you know, throughout the process. And as I would get closer to the contest, my mind really locked into that energy of being on stage. All of a sudden, I remember nights and mornings, I'd wake up and say, man, shoot, my legs are already defined overnight. Like it just happened, it would happen. And so there's something about the focus where your body can accelerate. Now I've dieted in the past, like I used to for bodybuilding shows before I uh, created the Panda, and I couldn't get in the same type of shape. I didn't have that urgency to show, not the same level of focus. So focus is the first thing. If you're focusing on how much it sucks to try to get lean, then guess what? You are going to suffer. The boys aren't home right now, dude. Okay, good to see you, man. Um, one of the neighbor's kids. So yeah, it, it really comes down to what you focus on, all right? What you choose to focus on are the results that you're gonna get. The second thing, obviously, is fasting. You, you couldn't really think I was going to do this without mentioning fasting. So fasting is the only thing that works long term. I don't care what anybody says. It's the only thing that works long term. You guys have watched a lot of my fasting videos. You know the science, my thoughts on it. You're affecting insulin, right? And now I've got a couple of events coming up. When I want to really dial it up, I just go to 72s or I do a little bit of dry fasting. And yes, it's a struggle when I'm in the midst of the fast, but it's a decision. There's no willpower involved. It's a decision and it's black or white. That's a big part of the panda, guys. And the fasting just strips body fat off. And I sit at a very uh, 
lean body weight right now where I used to have to really struggle to get down to the nitty gritty and the body fat. Now, it doesn't mean I'm necessarily ripped. I don't care about that, right? I have pretty much zero internal fat. My visceral is at a one or a two pretty much anytime I do the in-body. And I have like hardly any inflammation within my body. So now I could cruise around between six and a half and, and nine and a half percent body fat with no, um, no uh, real, I don't want to say effort, but it's not a struggle. Right? It's an enjoyable process and it keeps compounding. The longer you do the panda, it keeps compounding and your skin will get thinner and you'll just keep noticing more and more stuff. Right, So that is a, uh, a huge thing as far as fat loss. If you want permanent fat loss, yes, you can get lean doing a bodybuilding type program. I'm talking about sustainability. If you can't sustain this, which 99.99% of the world's population cannot sustain a bodybuilding type lifestyle, including most bodybuilders, you look at some of them in the off season, uh, then, then what are we doing, right? It's all about habits. That's why I infuse mind mapping into the panda. It's really about habits. Can you form a habit around the thing you're doing? If you can't, why are you doing it? It doesn't make sense in my mind. So fasting is the second biggest factor. Now, the third one, this has to do with focus as well. Total immersion in what you are doing, guys. Total immersion. When I go into fat loss mode, when I go to fat loss mode, I immerse myself in it. I start studying the topic. And guys, this is how this is how the panda was created. It was in a fat loss contest with my staff four years ago. And I was about 250 pounds, 16% body fat. So I wasn't fat, but I wasn't comfortable. And I had been doing fasting, the fasting that, that I first started, but most people know is intermittent fasting. I've been doing that for five years to that point. And I was, I was pretty comfortable with it. You know, I, I, I would do a 16, sometimes I would do a one meal a day. And I thought that was long at that point. Um, I'll go over that question in a minute. How do you fast but not get dehydrated? It's a very good question. But total immersion. So I immersed myself back into the study, the study and the science of fasting, and I started applying it on myself. Started doing 48-hour fasts. That whole first summer, I did 72-hour fast. Now, if you did a four-day fast that first summer, you better bet, uh, you better believe, I should say, that that I completely. Um, completely immerse myself into fasting and that's how I learned it to such a high level I immerse myself and I did it that's called developing direct knowledge so when you want to lose fat go back to it. it's all out war on every front what are you studying how are you learning how to do it and it's it's a critical factor if you're just gonna dance around the edges and all you're doing with your fat loss is you're kind of um, doing a little more cardio or watching what you eat you ain't gonna get that good of results okay so uh, that's what it is. Yes, you, you can start with a 24-hour fast um, if you would like. I'm just telling you what I do. I do the black version, guys. That's how I live. Now, this week I did a 72. Next week I'm toying with doing the 72-hour dry fast and uh, maybe finishing that with a psychedelic trip. I think it's about time I did another one of those. So I'd be in an altered spiritual state already from doing a dry fast that long. So stay tuned for that. But it's total immersion, right? So I'll dial it up when I want to. I'll do 72s. I'll do my indigo, right? And that's the only way you can get this hat. And by the way, people are asking about the hats. We have new ones being made. But this one, you can only get through doing the indigo panda. So that challenge will be on my website soon. And um, it's a complete mental and, and spiritual vision quest when you do the indigo panda. So let's get to the next factor. You need to measure if you're not measuring it, I mean, there's been times in the past with fat loss, I'll take my calipers from when I did biosignature, and I still do that on select people. And I, I would just get my, how much fat do I have in the umbilical? I'll measure it in millimeters. And I would do, um, you know, do that every week. And I would see what those millimeters be going down. Now I'll track my in-body. I'll do pictures. But, but there's got to be measurement. You cannot measure what the things, uh, you can't improve the things that you do not measure. Okay, think about your finances. Think about anything. Right? And think about that with your relationships. That's a different topic. But how are you gauging that? What is your relationship like with your with your spouse? What is your relationship like with your kids? How, how would you rank that? Right? you got to measure. That's the only way you can improve. And with that, I put deadlines. That's part of the measurement. Your deadlines are your lifelines, guys. Your deadlines are your lifelines. And nothing is real until it's scheduled. Put it on there, right? I've got um, a lot of physical goals I set for this period of time all the way through the end of the year including body composition goals. I want to be below 7% or hit 7% uh, 
at least one point in June, one point in July, one point in August. I've got different races, endurance races, stuff that's way out of my wheelhouse that I'm doing for the first time. So I got to balance that performance goal uh, with the body composition, but I have deadlines. I've got specific deadlines. Now I'm going out to Wes Watson's Mastermind, Mansion Mastermind in a couple weeks. Want to be in, in peak physical shape for that. Then we, me and Devin go to Jamaica uh, mid-May, so I'm being peak physical shape for that. I want my kids, guys. You know, and this is not a deadline. This is where it's like, this is my life now, guys. There's no going backwards. Right? So once you make that transition in your head, it's very powerful. But my boys are watching me. They're going to always see what type of shape I'm in. Is dad really kicking ass out there, or is he just kind of talking the talk, right? Um, you know, you got to walk the walk, guys. Talk is cheap. Real quick on the fasting. So I'll come back to the fasting questions here in a minute, guys. So I want to make sure I get through all these, and we'll circle back to fasting. So we have fasting, focus, total immersion, measurement, and deadlines. And a good idea that I'm even toying with is getting uh, a photographer for a certain deadline. Hey, anybody wants to do this with me, this photographer showing up this date, shirts off, while you're working out, let's see what you got, right? So almost like you're doing a contest in that regard. And then physical recreation. So I'm talking about movement. Your mind, body, spirit are intimately connected. Exercise itself, guys, is not going to, going to uh, burn fat, right? Very little. It's a big misconception. But you have to incorporate it, right? It's gonna it's gonna change your brain chemistry when you exercise and you physically recreate. Re recreation is playing. Recreate is recreating the spirit. So it's it's essential. It goes hand to hand with getting peak physical shape. You look at some of the the statues, like when we were in Rome last summer, and you see the philosophy that was there, and you see the the, the physiques that were depicted through the statues, and Stoicism was big into this. The deepest thinkers had the best physiques. Think about the the. Um, you know, some of the 60s and 70s bodybuilders, aero bodybuilders, Tom Platts, uh, Arnold, Franco, uh, all these guys, Frank Zane, Mike Metzer, these guys were philosophers, right? And they tied that in. They tied in the recreating of the spirit to the, they knew the physical, right? The physical recreation was a huge part of it, but you're training. Your body is your temple, right? So you want to train to change your brain chemistry and to keep your joints healthy and to put muscle and strength on. Don't use it to lose fat, guys. That's silliness. All right, so those are my five biggest factors for fat loss. Notice I didn't say counting calories, counting macros. Throw that stuff out the window, okay? This is what, what has lasted and will stand the test of time. I promise you that. And if you try it, you will see, right? Show me a, a the success rate of people that follow the typical North American diet. It is piss, piss poor. People that go into Panda, I know because I tracked them, they still crush it three, four years after so that is the five biggest factors in fat loss. Believe me or not, it doesn't make a difference. Take it and, and utilize what is useful. Take what is useful, as Bruce Lee said, and discard the rest. Right? But this is what is my truth, and this is what I teach to people that are interested in learning from me. Okay, so there we have it. So good beginner fast. You go on my black version of the Panda. 48-hour fast followed by one meal a day. You might say, well, Kyle, how is that a beginner fast? Because don't, don't play around in the shallow end. You dive right in with the 48, and I've taught this many times because it's going to build your confidence. It's going to knock out any fear you have regarding fasting. And we want to get results, right? So that's what I still recommend as a uh, beginner fast. How do you stay hydrated, right, uh, when you're fasting? The sodium, guys, the juice that I talked about in a lot of my salt videos, and I'm studying salt even more and more now. Who knew salt would be such a hot topic, right? Uh, I guess people find it interesting when I talk about salt. But it shows you this information is much needed. But water follows sodium. So that's how you stay hydrated. You actually hydrate through sodium, not through water. Water follows sodium, guys. So a lot of people say, well, oh, I'm going to eat more sodium. I'm going to retain water very temporarily. I'm not going to go into all the science of this right now. But that's how you stay hydrated. Adequate amounts of sodium. So there you guys have it. And please remember that anybody that joined me on TikTok Live, thank you. This is the first time doing it. I don't even know how to stop the live. So I'll probably just shut the app when it's over. But... Let's see here. When we break the 48-hour fast, okay, when you break the 48-hour fast, guys, you break it with fruit. You break it with fruit. I'll get my big bowl of fruit ready to go right after I'm done with this. And that's another thing with fasting, guys. I, I have long days, right? And the kids, like I said, they're down the shore with Devin and my parents. And I, I just work. I will pump out work. I'm going to keep writing an article after this. And I won't eat until I'm done working. That's part of the fasting. Right? The fasting is more about the mind, guys. You'll learn that all these mental things you can do like but once i eat that's it i'm going to enjoy that feast and then i am uh going to 
you know, put an 80s movie on the background. You can hear the 80s music, like synth wave type stuff back there. And I'll probably study. And I'll really kind of set it. And I'll get up early tomorrow morning and I'll do the same thing, guys. And uh, I'll start writing. I'll start going through my morning routine, get connected with, with, with God and working on that relationship and, and the, the cold tub and all that. And I will start doing more of these lives on TikTok, guys. It's been something I've been wanting to do. So thank you for the support. Um, let's see here. You won't get carb flu. That, that's, no. Carb flu, I don't even know what that is, but I guess that's a new one for me. But you're not going to get carb flu. Um, guys, food is a drug. When you first go on a 48, make sure you're doing your sodium. You're going to get withdrawal symptoms, especially if you've been eating crap food, all right? And uh, do I eat meat? Yes. But if you look on how much I eat for the week, like I'll have leftover Mexican tonight, Wagyu beef, and we'll have prime ribs tomorrow night. I've, I've tested this. We'll go essentially vegan for almost a whole month. And that's a whole nother thing. We don't need nearly as much protein as we've been told. Protein is more anabolic, of course. But they, there are health implications that come along with it as well. And you just have to test this out. Again, go to what can you form a habit around. I love eating burgers. When we go out to eat, my go-to is a burger or two burgers, depending on the size of them, usually two. I'm not going to give that up, right? It's something I grew up doing and I enjoy. But by the very nature of the panda, you cut down on your meat consumption. Amino acid, it makes the body more acidic, right? So I'm all about the micronutrients. What can you get from the food that you are eating? Meat doesn't have nearly as many micronutrients as stuff like uh, fruit, right? Fruit is the king. So you want to go with fruit. That's how I break my fast. I do not use any protein powder. I have not used protein powder in probably 10 years. And you're very welcome. Um, shakes are for fakes, guys. Get your, get your nutrients from real food. Get your nutrients from real food, right? Let that appetite do, let the digestion do the proper work that it has to do. Okay, let, let, that, let that take place, and uh, you go from there, guys. But I promise you it'll change your life. Just follow the stuff I'm telling you guys to do, and your life will dramatically change. Dramatically. So take what is useful and discard the rest. All right, I'm going to go get my feast ready, and then I'm going to keep writing the, five, the uh, conspiracies of food article I've been working on. No, so the meal would be fruit. The last one I'm going to answer here, okay? Because that, uh, there yeah, you got it. I appreciate it. Here for the panda. Appreciate, appreciate the support and the love, guys. You eat your fruit, then you go into your main meal. Anything that came from the earth, and then your your animal protein, if you want to have it there. And then, like I have uh, overnight oats, I'll do that. So I make them in the morning. I don't really do it overnight. That's my dessert. So I got cocoa powder in there. I got cinnamon stevia. I'll put some frozen blueberries if we have them. I'll do some like Justin's almond butter. It's delicious. It's dessert. And I love the way I eat, guys. It's I, it's a it's a blessing every time I get to eat. It is it is the best thing ever when I get to eat. Do you feel like that about when you eat? If you don't, then you're doing something wrong. Food is a drug, and it's meant to be enjoyed. And each meal we should be appreciative of. And if you don't feel like that, it means you're taking it for granted because you're eating way too often, guys. So that's my take on it. Now, don't forget, I, I correspond much more on Instagram right now. So that's the Panda Man official. Follow me over there. DM me there, you know, I'll ch I've been trying to check in more on, um, thanks man, cool from Trinidad, that's awesome man, all over, thanks brother, and uh, I answer all the DMs there, and I DM people that follow me over there, check in on them, so follow me over there at the Panda Man Official on Instagram, you all have a great night, let me figure out how to shut these off, and appreciate the support. Alright guys, I will catch you all later.